Inside the Classroom takes an in-depth look at one of Team Hardin County School's best teachers in action, featuring comments, class instruction, and insight inside the classroom. I became a teacher because I knew that I always wanted to work with children and um, so I knew that I wanted to major in something child related when I went to Western and I started out wanting to be a speech pathologist but then an opportunity came along to, um, to take part in the IECE master's program so I did that and, um, and then we did our practicum at Jones Jaggers with the Head Start program and then I worked with First Steps and I just knew that I knew that was the right fit for me. I knew that was the place to be. So it was somewhere within the birth to five age range. So. Probably the biggest inspiration for me to be a teacher would be one of my favorite teachers growing up was which was my fifth grade teacher Mr. Smith at Lincoln Trail. Um, he was an awesome teacher and he always motivated me to want to do better and uh, he made learning fun so he was probably my biggest uh, inspiration as far as wanting to be a teacher. Dear class, hello friends, today Today is Tuesday because yesterday was Wednesday. Wednesday. Yesterday was Monday. Monday. Today is Tuesday, and then tomorrow is Friday. 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 If today is Wednesday. Tuesday, then tomorrow is Saturday. Wednesday. Bailey, I need you to come up here because you're playing with the block. Come sit right here. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, so we're going to clap out that sentence. Today is Tuesday. Are you ready? Today is Tuesday. How many words are in that sentence? Three. So we know that today, that's one word, is, that's the second word, and Tuesday. And you know what, guys? Ollie, he forgets all the time. When he writes his letter, he forgets. Are we supposed to go from left to right or from right to left when we read? Who said left? You're right, Sabrina. You're right, Sawyer. When we read, we always go from left. So everybody get your hand out to the left. Go from left all the way to the right. And when we start reading, do we read at the top or do we start reading at the bottom? Good, Bailey. When we start reading, we read at the top. To the bottom. Gabriel, can you go sing this kid? So when we read, we read from the top to the bottom and from the left to the right. All right, so Ollie's going to finish his letter. And it says, I am so glad to see you today. Because Ollie is glad to see his friends every day. And he misses you when you're not here. And it says, this week we will learn about farms. 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 Church. What? is a farm. As far as the schedule of our day, um, we like to try to keep as much on schedule and as structured as possible just because for this age group we find that structure works the best. <laughs> uh, and so we have a visual schedule on our whiteboard that we go through with the kids every day. So after we complete one step, they're used to saying check because it kind of it kind of lets us know that yes we can check that off our list we've done that and now the next thing to do is and then we let them know they they can just look up there and they are able to tell in their schedule what comes next and it it's very helpful for many reasons for uh for our new students who are starting they're able to look and see you know it's i have to do two more things before i get to go home and see mom and for our students who we've had for a while it's helpful because they uh instead of them having to constantly wonder, I wonder what we're going to do next, and 
for them to have more structure and just to feel more confident about what's going on in their day. They're just able to look and see what's, what's going to be happening next. So that is very helpful for us. Um, and when we first come in from lunch, um, we always wiggle some waggles out is what we call it. We have some movement breaks. And then we're, we look back at our schedule to see, now we read a story, so then they know it's time to calm down and sit down and attend to a story. And then they're able to see that after our story, we go to our literacy small group. And then they know they have to work first to be, before they go to center time, which is right after our literacy small group. And remember yesterday, some of you told Miss Monica, some of you said that what you already know about a farm is that animals make food. Pigs like mud, food comes from farms, and farms have barns, and chickens lay eggs. So it sounds like you all already know a whole lot about farms. So the more we learn, the more we're going to keep. And what? Fruit. And fruit. That's right. It's fruit Monica. comes from. Yeah. I put you in the and I saw a So that's right. You know, farms can have different animals on them. Some farms only, is a, like our dairy farm, only have cows. I ride on a horse. You did? Some farms are only a horse farm and only have horses. But then there's other farms. You see all these animals up here? There are other farms that have all kinds of many different kinds of animals on them. Uh, Monica is a, an exceptional teacher. She puts students first. Um, she goes above and beyond. She's very patient. Um, works well, great with parents as well as the other assistants in her classroom. Um, she just when you observe her with the students, you can just see the true passion and love that she has for students. So we are getting ready to read our story today. And guess what? And guess what? It's about a farm. It's actually called On the Farm. So On the hand if you think you know how many words are in that title on the farm. Well, you got to raise a quiet hand, Bailey. A quiet hand looks like this. Mason, how many words are in that title? Three. That's right. On the farm. That's right. And it's written by David Elliott and it's illustrated by Holly Mead. So if David Elliott is the author, he wrote the... He wrote the words. And if Holly Mead is the illustrator, she drew the Picture. pictures. What do you like about Miss Monica? That she plays with me. That she plays with you. And what's your favorite place to play at school? House. House center. Why do you like the house center? Because it has babies in it. It has babies in it. So on the farm, just by looking at the front of the book, raise a quiet hand if you think you can tell what this book might be about. I know the title Pigeon. says on the farm, but I'm looking for a quiet hand. I'm looking for, wow, I see a lot of nice quiet hands, but I think I saw Chiron's first. Chiron, what do you think this book is going to be about? I'll show you the whole, there's the front and back cover. What do you think this book is going to be about? Um, okay, so you mean like, alligators and rhinoceroses and giraffes, those kind of animals, like jungle animals, zoo animals. What kind of animals? You're right, farm animals. Thanks, Kyra, good job. Yeah, it's gonna be about farm animals. All right. So probably the best practices that I have used to try to reach all students, um, each student is different and each student has different needs. So there's really not one telltale strategy or te technique that always works all of the time for all of the students. But the best thing I think that works for me and my team is that we try to get to know the student on a personal and individual basis before, before learning can really take place. They have to know that they can trust us and come to us if they ever feel like something is wrong or, or they don't feel comfortable about something. So, so we try to, we try to get that in place first, the trust and, and just to let them know that we care about them and when they're not here, we're gonna miss them when they're not here. <laughs> and that looks like a big old farmhouse and a big old barn. Cause it is. Cause it is. And barns are important on farms, aren't they? We talked earlier about what all a barn does. So this says the rooster. 
The rooster crows and struts. He's got feathers. He's got guts. Already, I can tell that there are going to be rhyming words in this story. Mm -hmm. Struts, guts. They both say us at the end. Oh, the rooster struts and crows. What's he thinking? No one knows. That's a lot of words. But he, he struts around like he owns the place, doesn't he? Hmm. Does anybody know what a root? I was just going to say, does anybody know what a rooster says, by the way? And if, and if he struts, then he kind of goes around like he, like he kind of struts around the farm, like he owns it. The cow makes milk standing grazing. Abracadabra, she is utterly amazing. So the cow has all kinds. These are dairy cattle. The black and white spots. So dairy cattle, we get our milk from dairy cows, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's a good question, Christopher. Um, and actually, you know that the VR goggles we used yesterday that you put on? Miss Monica found a VR app that has cows getting milked. So you can see cows getting milked and how the milk comes out, and then it has to go through a processing plant. And then it goes to the grocery store, and then we get to drink it. So we can't just hold our glass underneath the cow. That wouldn't be very practical, would it? Not everybody has a cow. It's easier to go to the grocery store and get your milk, isn't it? Yeah. But the milk at the grocery store comes from a cow. It says the pony. The pony whinnies in the wind. He kicks in his stall. He's as mighty as his cousin, just not as tall. Who is his cousin? Who is the pony's cousin? The big black one. The horse, uh-huh. Because the pony is like a smaller version of the horse. The horse is bigger. He's tall. And the pony is kind of short. Uh, some of her best practices uh, that you will see in Ms. Uh, Monica's classroom is uh, music. You see a, a lot of music songs, uh, definitely her centers that she has created for the students. Uh, also, the use of technology, the way she uses her smart board to engage students, uh, whether it be a video or, again, whether it be a song. Uh, a lot of questioning. I don't think people realize how much questions they ask in preschool. Um, but she does a great job of uh, trying to connect with the students and asking them questions to get them to uh, learn and make connections about what they're learning. The dog sleeps with one eye open in the shady farmhouse yard, but you might think he's keeping cool. Beware, he is keeping guard. And him is big. Yeah, he is. He's like an old farm dog too, isn't he? He thinks he wants you to think that he's sleepy, but if you if somebody comes there that doesn't belong on the farm. Or another animal? Do you think he'd be? <laughs> That's right. Come away. <laughs> he'd be up and barking. Rah, 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 rah. Like you don't belong here. You don't belong here. <laughs> All right. What's this animal? Does sheep. Find? Sheep. The sheep. He began his woolly life as gentle as a lamb. Too bad he turned into a ram. Bam. Ram. Bam. They rhyme. They say am at the end. Oh, the old barn cat. Hmm. Why do you think they have cats in barns, Christopher? Because you don't know. Because you don't know? Well, what are these little things that like to live in a barn? Mice. Mm -hmm. Mice like to live in the barn. So sometimes mice can be a nuisance because they might, they might eat some of the animals' food that's for the animals. And the farmers don't want the mice in their barn. But what helps get rid of the mice? A, cat. <laughs> a kitty cat. So the barn cat. Mice had better think twice. Hmm. So mice twice. There's some more rhyming words. I would definitely say the greatest joys in the classroom, uh, without a doubt, is when they wrap their little arms around your neck and tell you they love you. And it's so funny because sometimes they'll say, Mommy, I mean, Miss Monica. <laughs> Or they'll do that to my assistants too. So to me, that's a compliment. Like they feel comfortable enough they're at school, but it's almost like they feel like, you know, they're at home. Like mommy, I mean Miss Monica, because they know that uh, that we will, that they can come to us for anything. So that's one of the greatest joys is just having that that bond and and know that they love you and we love them. So. <laughs> what do you think this farm animal is? Goat. A goat. The goat. He eats everything from trash to trillium. Hey, look out, he'll knock you silly. When he's bad, we call him William. When he's good, he's just Billy. 
<laughs> so it's kind of like you when you get in trouble at your house. Your mom says your whole name. Mm -hmm. Does that happen to you, Sawyer? When you get in trouble? That's right. Does she say Sabrina? Does she say your whole name? And you're like, yes, ma'am. <laughs> then she says, Come when we get in trouble, my mom says, Queen and Pig. That is a creepy this pig. A <laughs> pig. I can in trouble. My mom said, Queen and Pig. She says, No. The pig, her tail, it's as coy as a ringlet. In her eye, there's a delicate sheen. Some look at her and see a sow. A sow is a girl pig. But I see a beauty queen. And I was going to ask, what does a pig sound like? But I can tell you all already. <laughs> You're already practicing. That's a big old pig. That is a big old pig. Uh, raise a quiet hand if you've ever been to the state fair. Have you ever been to the state fair? I did. Oh, Miss Monica likes to go and look at all the animals because sometimes they'll have the biggest pig. And it's huge. And all I can do is just lay there. And it just wallers in the mud. All right, now this one is camouflage. It's hard to see. Raise a quiet hand if you think you know what animal this is. A snake! Wait, I'm looking for a quiet hand, and I saw Oakley's quiet hand first. A snake. Oakley, why do you think, well, can the farmers keep the snakes off their property? Probably not, because when you have lots and lots of land and lots and lots of corn, and then you have barns and you have plants, there's all kinds of hiding place for snakes, so you can't really keep them off your property. But the snake, he coils in the garden like a spring in the wild, and winding melody he hears but cannot sing. But you know what? Some farmers might want a snake in their plants and in their garden and in their corn because some animals that would come and normally eat their crops, the snake might keep them out. It might keep them out of that, right? Snakes. Miss Monica enhances our staff here at Heartland Elementary, first and foremost, because she's just always so positive. I don't think you'll ever see Miss Monica without a smile on her face. Um, again, she uh, cares for her students, but she also cares for all the people that she works with. Um, so again, positivity, smile on her face, um, just true, genuine person. Now here's one thing you might not think of of being on a farm, the bees. But in the summertime, you think bees. there's bees on a farm? Yeah. Bees. Sure. The bees tell their story, sweet and old. It begins in clover and it ends them. in gold. Like the gold honey. Then lick the honey out of the flowers. Oh, raise a quiet hand if you like honey. Me too. Honey comes from bees. All right. Raise a quiet hand if you know what this, yeah. this farm animal is. Aliana, what's this one? A farm. It says the turtle lifts her fossil head and blinks one, two, three times in the awful light. In her house, it's always night. She likes it where it's dark and cool. She doesn't like the bright sunlight. So I'm sure farms that have ponds, they have lots of snapping turtles in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The duck quacks, the goose honks, the hen squawks. But the rabbit, the rabbit, the rabbits, have you ever noticed they're always stopping and listening? And then they'll go a little bit and they'll stop and listen. What do you think they're listening for, Zane? Oh, mouse. Maybe mice. And the rabbit doesn't make a sound. So that was our book today about on the farm. I think Miss Monica will be remembered um, again for her love for students. I know her serving preschool students, uh, some of our students will go on up through kindergarten, up through uh, the rest of the school, and uh, you know she'll have students come back um, to see her. Either that there'll be siblings that'll even go and visit because again she's been able to establish those relationships with those families. Okay, here's what I want you to do. I want you, so we've learned about 
farms yesterday and today. Now I want you to turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor something about a farm. So it could be anything about a farm. It could be about the animals. It could be about any, we could use any of our vocabulary words, any of our amazing words. I have a bunch of neighbors, but I don't even know them. Okay, when well, you want to turn and tell me something. Your neighbor here saw your, your yeah. neighbor here in class. Your neighbor next to you in class. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor. You know how when we do our love you ritual and you turn to your neighbor and do your I love you ritual? Well, you're going to turn to your neighbor and you're going to talk about something about a farm, okay? Hey, Christopher. So, what do you want to tell me about a farm? Uh, goats. Goats? Yeah, goats are on a farm. And do you know goats probably eat anything and everything? They like to eat lots of grass. So, they might help. You might not need a lot more if you had a goat. <laughs> Because Monica might have to buy some hey, goats, Hunter, so we don't have to mow our grass. You're going to talk about what you've learned about a farm. And they what? Ask Mason what he learned about Yeah, the yeah, they, there's hay for horses, and they might have to keep some of that hay in the barn so it doesn't get wet. Because I don't know a whole lot about hay, but I do know that if it gets warm, okay? Hey, Christopher. So, what do you want to tell me about the farm? Why don't you ask Christopher to give Goats, yeah, goats are on a farm, and do you know goats probably eat anything and everything. They like to eat lots of grass, so they might help. You might not need a lot more if you had a goat. Because <laughs> Monica might have to buy some goats, so we don't have to mow our grass. I love her. Why do you love Miss Monica? Because she's beautiful. She's beautiful. All right, everybody, now it's time to go back to your spot and raise a quiet hand if you want to share if you want to share what you and your neighbor talked about, about a farm, then you may raise a quiet hand and Miss Monica will call on you. So Sabrina, what did you and your neighbor Aliana talk about? about we talked about cows. About cows. What did you say about cows? Like, what's their idea? Like, they, they do milk. Okay, that we get milk from cows? Okay, very good. So Sabrina and her neighbor Aliana talked about cows. Kyron, what did you and your neighbor talk about? Who was your neighbor? Graham. Graham? So what did you and Graham talk about? Um, horses and cows and pigs and goats. Well, I did it. Have have you, hey, Kyron, have you or Graham ever been on a I farm did it. Have to one. see those animals? I did it. have one. How was your partner? Remember, you told me and, you told me and Sawyer. <laughs> yeah, you told me. Wow. All right, Christopher. Well, how was your partner? Do I not count? Does Miss Monica not count as your partner? Of course she does. So, Christopher, what did you and your neighbor talk about? You talked about cows. Wow, cows are popular. Everybody likes cows. Cows are pretty cool. And what did you talk about about cows? Cows like Milk. Cows but do make milk, yeah. And chocolate milk, too. <laughs> well, <laughs> cows don't actually make chocolate milk. They make milk. They make milk. No, there's like chocolate milk cows. Chocolate milk cows. And you know, because guys, you know how milk, you have your choice of white milk, chocolate milk, and strawberry milk. So you have your choice of white milk. So cows make white, white milk. milk. And then when, you, when they make the chocolate milk, they put the chocolate flavoring in the chocolate milk. So that's how you get chocolate milk. So cows don't make chocolate milk, but they make white milk and they put the flavoring in it. The same with strawberry. There's not a cow that makes strawberry milk. So they have the white milk and they put the strawberry flavoring in it. There's a strawberry cow. No, there's not a strawberry cow, girl. Yes, there is. Hey, guys, let's think about our lunch today. So did broccoli come from a farm? Yes. Mm -hmm. Did your chicken nuggets, did it come from a farm? No. Chicken? Mm -hmm. From yeah. chickens? Yeah. Uh, what else do we have? Strawberries. Strawberries. Strawberries come from a farm. Mm -hmm. And grapes. Grapes, yeah. Those grapes were good today, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah those good. And what comes from a farm? Grapes. And your salad. And your salad. Oh, all those good vegetables. Red peppers on your salad. Lettuce. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. no, no, they grow that on a farm. No, no salad. All right, right, guys, everybody. Anybody else want to share what they, them and their neighbor talked about that didn't get to share? Hunter. What did you and your neighbor talk about? Pigs and cows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pigs are pretty cool too. Aren't they? Emily, what did you and your neighbor, Miss Rita, talk about? We talked about all of it. All of it. All of what? 
All the farm stuff. Yeah. Your dad told me you'd be excited about learning about the farm. All right. Anybody else? All right. Everybody, one, two, three, on your feet. Miss Monica will definitely be remembered by her students. She's the most, one of the most compassionate people I know. Um, she's very patient, very kind. Um, the kids love her. She, I don't think I've ever seen Miss Monica lose her patience with anybody. Um, the kids even call her mom sometimes. <laughs> Mistakenly, they'll say mom instead of Miss Monica. Um, she's just a wonderful person to work with and she loves kids. M-N-O-P. I've been in preschool for 15 years. Um, from the time I started with Hardin County Schools, I've been in preschool. I started at Lincoln Trail Elementary and then we got moved over here to Heartland. I've worked with uh, Miss Monica for six years. Um, I actually got her to come back to preschool to be a preschool teacher because she had taught and then she stayed home for a while and I got her to come back to Lincoln Trail when they needed another preschool teacher because I knew she would be awesome and I love working in preschool and I love working with her. And after we do our literacy small group, we're going to go to our free choice centers. So if you sit at the red table, I need you to strut like a rooster. Teachers are important in many ways. Um, we're not we're not just teachers. We are a whole combination of things. Um, so really, uh, the most important job we have it is to help children learn, of course, but it's also to help children learn how to cope um, and how to work as a team and how to be a good friend and how to be a good listener uh, and how just to be a good citizen. Um, so our every every teacher knows that their job is not just to teach letters and numbers and patterns and colors and shapes and uh, it's so much more than that. It's to, to teach how to be kind to others, how to be a good citizen, how to be responsible and so that's why teachers are important. So pull out one letter. Oh, there is paper inside. You're right. That's my sister's name. Your sister's name starts with the letter E? What is your sister's name? Emma does start with an E. You're right, and an E has all straight lines, no curves. She goes to a different Miss Bobby? Wow, I didn't know there were two Miss Bobbies. Cool. So guys, you're going to make a line going down. Now E is hard, so I can help you. So I will write a, oh, are you putting that on yours like I have on my shirt? So I'm going to put a straight line going down and then a line going across. So you have three lines going across. And nice E. Oh wow, Sabrina, good job. You all are doing great. Nice job, Chiron. Here, I'll help you. So you make a, you were right, you make a line going down and then one line going straight across and then one in the middle going straight across and then one at the bottom going straight across. Nice job, everybody. Very nice. E says E. E says E. Every letter makes a sound. E says E for egg, and it can also say and it can also say E for Easter, right? Easter egg starts with an E. And Emma, that's my. And Emma. Okay, now, now for Sabrina's turn. All right, Sabrina, you're gonna reach in there, and you all can just erase it with your finger like that. It comes off really easy. All right. All right, Miss Sabrina, can you reach in there and pull out a letter? I wonder what her mystery letter is going to be. Uh-oh. Can you can you turn it the other way? There you go. What is it? You're close. L. L. So an L has two straight lines. Remember how our E how our E had four straight lines, and L has two straight lines, one going down and one going across. Nice L. So L says, L says, hi guys, hi.